And welcome back. Last Friday night, we were the first to bring you the story of 18-year-old DeAndre Arnold. The senior is in a dress code dispute with the administrators from Barbers Hills ISD in Mount Bellevue, Texas. They say the length of DeAndre's dreadlock hair style doesn't meet their code. But his family says there should be no issue because of DeAndre wears his hair pinned up every day. Last year's board meeting was packed as people on both sides of the issue sounded off. I'm here to say that I support that dress code. Um, I think that it uh, reflects our community's values, holds our students accountable. Um, I think it uh, is a measure for personal conduct and that it also uh, establishes the high standards that are synonymous with what it means to be a barbers illegal. This is not an issue about dress code. This is the way that this child's hair grows naturally out of his head. He is not dressing to come to school. He is existing in a black body. And any attack on the way that he looks and presents, just as he was gifted to us in this world, is an attack on his culture and his race and his body. Now, we've learned tonight that DeAndre's cousin, also a student at Barbers Hill High School, is now being told he too will be put into in school suspension if he doesn't cut his dreadlocks. Caden Barber is, a tenth is in the 10th grade and has been growing his hair for about two years. His mother said he showed up to school with his hair in braids today, but the school principal said he was still not in dress code. Joining me now is attorney, Houston attorney, Sadia Evangelista, to talk about this. Just very frustrating because now you see it going down racial lines where many whites in the community or from around all of our communities are saying follow the code while blacks are saying this is unfair. I agree the the code is inherently racist. Now we're talking about microaggression and we're talking about a racist policy. And you know, let's talk about the word dreadlocks in the first place. Dreadlocks were um, connote dreadful, and that's what the slave master used to call the African slave's hair when they were locked and beautifully locked. They would call it dreadful. So we have a history of calling dreadlocks from a racist connotation. Now here you have, as the sister said, that these the the hair grows out naturally the way that it does, and so you want to penalize these students for you know what is natural to them. But we know that Title VI of the, um, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 stipulates that schools who receive federal funding cannot and is prohibited to discriminate against uh, individuals based on their national origin, their race, or their color. And here you see those two students are exactly being discriminated because of who they are and because of their national origin and because of their race and color. What would it take in order for them to get a change in policy? Would it require the families now involved to file some type of lawsuit? Absolutely. So the family has an opportunity to go to the Office of the Civil Rights and file a complaint against the school because Barbara Hill um, does receive federal funds. Now, when you look at the demographics of the school, it's 57, about 5,700 students, 70% is white, and 3% is African American or black. And so we see that this policy, you know, the young men have been wearing their hair, you know, um, DeAndre since he was 10 years old at the ISD and his cousin now for two years. And so all of a sudden they have an issue with this particular policy when they were not enforcing it. And But when you read the language of the policy, Isaiah, they're not violating anything with that policy at all. Mm -hmm. So the mother, my understanding, I had a conversation with her. She challenged the, um, the superintendent and because she challenged the superintendent, I uh, believe in the beginning of the school year, now this is retaliation against him and his family, DeAndre and his family. Now, we have uh, also heard from the school district since all of this uh, initially occurred on the factor Friday night, and they're saying we don't have a policy against dreadlocks. It's the length of the hair below the earlobes and eyebrows. Absolutely, it's a policy against the locks. And because, you know, as the students said, at no point in time did they wear their hair down, did they wear their hair in their face. Their hair is braided up appropriately and is meeting the requirements of the policy. So even when you read the, the, the letter of the policy, um, they're not violating anything. And so if they happen to be of the, the Sikh religion, then what do you do when they're, you know, not supposed to cut their hair? So we have, you know, or if they were transgender and they wore hair, you know, so this policy discriminates against religion and a gender line as well. 
And this is bigger than Barbers Hill, just Barbers Hill, because we're getting comments from parents all around the country, people saying, I had to cut my child's hair because I didn't want to do the fight. I didn't want to go into court and, and file a lawsuit. I didn't want to go into a battle. But this is something that's going on all around the country, in, except in states where they've made it illegal. So, you know, I would encourage those particular parents, those students, to go to the Office of the Civil Rights of the Department of Education and file a complaint, especially in Barbara Teal's ISD. And so there are three things that will take place. They can voluntarily comply and get rid of this um, illegal, racist, unconstitutional policy. Or if they decide that they don't want to do that, then the next step is to have a hearing, an administrative hearing between the Department of Justice and then the, the federal funds can be terminated from these particular school ISDs. So we gotta fight, we can't sit down on this. And so I would encourage the parents of DeAndre and DeAndre to stand firm and resolute in not getting his care cut. All right, thank you for joining us here on The thank Factor. You. And once again, we would love to extend an invitation to school officials at Barbers Hill. You're always welcome here on The Factor Uncensored. When we come back, we're following a story. Tomorrow night, DeAndre will be back here on The Factor with his younger cousin to talk how this dress code dispute is affecting them. 